Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the Poldark series by Winston Graham. So before I do head into this video, you guys, I am reviewing the entirety of the Winston Graham Poldark series, which does consist of 12 books. Um, the thing is, I'm not going to have any spoilers. I feel if I go into spoilers, this video will be very, very long and lengthy. Um, so if you do want to hear about my more specific um, thoughts, uh, especially in regards to maybe uh, plot details or character things or even some character deaths or whatever, um, uh, I have tons and tons of spoilers on my Goodreads account. If if you click through all of my Poldark books and you go to the, the reviews for all of them, I do go into pretty specific detail about a lot of some big major things that do happen. Um, so yeah, if you want those types of spoilers, uh, you can go do that through Goodreads. Because like I said, this, this video will be terribly long if I go through every little damn thing that happens in this series because there's a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as I can, as specific as I can. I kind of just want to make uh, a lot of people just more aware of this particular series. If you're not aware of it already because I feel like this series is like a very niche sort of thing because I feel like there's the group that, that has heard of it and they love it and then you, obviously just another larger group that's like I've never heard of these books but they sound good. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's start from uh, the beginning I guess. Try to give you an overview of everything as best I can. Uh, the, the Poldark series uh, is by Winston Graham, who is actually, he is, he is dead, the author. Uh, he died uh, in 2003. Um, he, he, he was an author who, who, who he had a big collection of, of books that he had written, but Poldark is like his big series that I think he's best known for. Um, the Poldark series consists of 12 books. Um, and the very first book in the series was actually published in 1945. And book 12, wait for you guys, book 12 was published in 2002. So that's 12 books over the course of multiple decades, you guys. Uh, and I, I was kind of amused about that because people have been going on and on about George R. R. Martin who writes the... Um, the, the Song of Ice and Fire books, Game of Thrones, um, everyone is always going on and on about how slow he is as a writer and it's going to take forever to get all of the books in that series. Um, and Winston Graham is like, I feel like he's the equivalent of George R. R. Martin, if you will, that he took his good old time writing his books. If he felt like writing a book, he just, he just wrote it whenever he felt like it, you know? So yeah, you have this series of books from 1945 to 2003, you know, published in that span of time. Um, but the amazing thing is, it, there's no inconsistencies. Believe it or not, there's no inconsistencies. There's there's no characters behaving out of character. Um, it's like Winston Graham. He he has he's remembered everything that he's written over the years. You know, from 1945 to 2002. Um, he, ha he has remembered all those little plot details and character details, and that's really the truly remarkable thing about this series. Is, I mean, I, I read this series in a span of four months, and never once was I sitting there thinking, oh, I can tell that this has been written between 1945 to 2002. You know, I never once thought that. It felt like all these books were just written consecutively, you know, within a short span of time. That's how I, I think just wonderfully beautiful this whole series is put together by Winston Graham. Um, so yeah, what is the Poldark series even about? Um, the, the series primarily f takes place in like the, the late 1700s and then into the early 1800s. So you're essentially getting this big family saga through 
a, through a series of multiple decades, if you will. So when you start off with book one here, book one being called Ross Poldark, you're, this is your main character in Poldark. Uh, if you notice, guys, all my covers, all my covers are from the TV series because I love the TV series. Um, so yeah, with the what essentially happens in the very first book in Poldark, um, our main character Ross Poldark. Um, he is coming back after the events of the American Revolutionary War, um, but he's coming back. A, he's coming back a war hero. He's been slightly injured. He he kind of has like a bit of a, a leg that's kind of messed up. He has like a scar running down his face. Um, but he comes back a war hero. Um, in the meantime, though, he he's come back to his ancestral home, which which resides in Cornwall, England. He comes back, and he he's all set out to marry the love of his life named Elizabeth. But lo and behold, he arrives only to discover that the family has kind of thought he, he might have died during the war. And Elizabeth is engaged to his cousin Francis. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, right from the get-go, you guys, right from the get-go, right, Ross Polder just arrives back in Cornwall and just things are going quickly downhill for him. He, he, he's lost the love of his life to his cousin. He also has discovered that his, his father has died while he's been away. Um, so he, he heads back to his home. Um, you know, and he's, he's set out on this, set up on this mission to, you know, restore his ancestral home to its former, former glory. Um, because it's a bit run down. The servants who have been in charge of it have been just really sloppy and lazy. And so he, he, he wants to restore the glory of his family home and, yeah, get, get a mine going. That's kind of what the Poldarks Primarily, their, their business occupation in these books is through the mining business and, and trade and whatnot. Um, so in the meantime, poor heart, heartbroken Ross Poldark, you guys, in the meantime, he stumbles across a young girl named Demelza. He uh, hires her to help around the house and for some cooking. But uh, as, as, as a couple years kind of go by, um, he starts to realize he's 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 attracted to her. He's falling in love with her. She's falling in love with him. So a, a very minor 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 spoiler in the grand context of twelve whole books, you guys. Um, Ross and Demelza do eventually get married by the time this first book uh, concludes. Um, so uh, the entirety of these twelve books is focused on this this love story between Ross and Demelza, uh, the children that they end up having, um, also focusing on their family and their friends. So you have this big extensive cast list of supporting characters besides Ross and Demelza. But yeah, Ross and Demelza, the entirety of this 12 book series, Ross and Demelza are your heart and your or, um, they are the ones that you are kind of primarily going on this journey with more than anything. You are witnessing their triumphs, you're witnessing their heartbreak, you're witnessing just, uh, you're wit witnessing the good times, you're wit witnessing the bad times, and their relationship, especially the first seven novels specifically, their relationship they they do struggle. They they go through financial issues. They go through some issues with with their children. They go through issues with you know other supporting characters. Um, but yeah, they do have a lot of complexity with their relationship. And yeah, the first seven novels specifically, they are they are still younger and they're still trying to learn about each other, get to know each other in some ways. They they rediscover certain things about each other. And they do, they they have moments of kind of drifting apart, but kind of ultimately coming back together. Um so so yeah. You read these books definitely I think for that relationship with, with Ross and Demelza and their their journey with one another, their journey as individuals, uh the just the overall journey of the whole dark family, because as I mentioned earlier, this entire series I think is a big family saga. 
because um, it's something you do need to know about this series. A big, there, there is a big shift in the narrative at one point. Um, you have the first seven novels that pretty much lead right up to the, the start of 1800. Um, and then what happens after that, Winston Graham, he decides to have a big time leap. So there is a 10 year gap in between book um, 7 and 8. So at this point, starting with book 8, um, you, you you still have Ross and Demelza that you're following, and then kind of a scattering of some of the other supporting cast that were introduced in the previous seven books. But yeah, starting with book eight, you, you the, the, there is a shift of focus with where you do s start to travel along with uh, the Poldark children, that being um, their older son Jeremy their their middle daughter Clowence, um, and their younger daughter Bella. Um, so you do get that shift and at, at first it is a bit it is a bit overwhelming. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of like oh my oh my goodness I'm not ready for this. <laughs> that kind of leads me to one of my next um, things I want to focus on is is kind of what my preferment was with this series, like my personal favorite books in the series. Um, but first, I loved every book, you guys. Every book in this series is breathtaking and remarkable, incredibly well done. They're, they're all powerful in their own ways. There's always just a, something. There's the one thing that kind of happens in each book and it's like, wow, can't believe that happened. Wow. <laughs> um, so, for me, because I initially started with the the TV series, the the BBC television series Poldark, and that starred Aidan Turner and Eleanor Tomlinson as Ross and Demelza. Um, I started with that show. It ran for five seasons. I freaking loved it, um, and that's what introduced me to um, this world, to these characters, and what those uh, f the first four, especially because the fifth season is kind of. A bit of a bridge, if you will. It, it doesn't really relate to any of the books. Um, the first four seasons especially, they go through the first seven books, if you will. So I read the first seven books knowing exactly where everything was going. I was anticipating all the highlights. I know I knew who was going to live, who was going to die, you know, big plot points. I knew everything that was to come. So um, I think because of my, my bias that I, I love the TV show, um, and I was already familiar with all that, the first seven books I think are definitely my, my favorites in the series, to be quite honest. Um, and then, yeah, with books 8 through 12, um, still incredibly highly enjoyable, and there's some truly shocking things that happened, and some big plot points and reveals and, and new interesting characters, but uh, I definitely think I would put books 8 through 12 as, you know, in, in second place, that I still really prefer books 1 through 7. Um, I think if I had to, if I had to pick one of the books that was maybe not the best, you know, if I had to put, if I had to put a book at the bottom of the pack, if you will, it probably would, quite honestly, be book eight, where you do get this big ten-year time gap, because uh, Winston Graham, he does spend a lot of time explaining to you, the reader, okay, this is what has happened in, in the ten-year gap. Um, this is who has gotten married. This is who's been born. This is who has died, you know. Um, this is just things that have happened to the Poldark family and the surrounding supporting cast of characters. So the book does spend, unfortunately, a lot of time really kind of explaining a lot of stuff. And it is, it's a little kind of overwhelming. There's a lot to take in. Plus, you got to take hey, the Poldark children are now kind of your new your new leads to some extent. And with that, some characters kind of do disappear. They're kind of sidelined um, into the background. They don't get as much page time as they used to in the previous seven books, which is kind of upsetting. 
Um, so yeah, if, if I did have to, if someone was asking me, oh, what's your favorite books in this series? What's your least favorite? My least favorite probably is book eight, uh, that one being The Stranger, uh, The Stranger from the Sea. Um, but still, even though that's my least favorite book in the series, it's like, that is still a remarkable book, you guys. It's like, I have to put something at the bottom, if you will. <laughs> you know, something has to go at the bottom. Um, but yeah, as far as some of my favorite books in this series, you guys, oh my god, where do, where do I even begin? Because I love them all. I think my top three favorite books from, from especially the first half of the, of the series, um, I love The Black Moon, and I love The Four Swans, and then, uh, it, seriously, my favorite book, if I had to pick, like, what, what would be my top favorite book? It probably would be The Angry Tide. I think this would probably be my top favorite, because there's really some crazy stuff that happens in this book, and it's like, oh my god. And then as far as the second half of the series goes, after the tenured time time jump, uh, the Twisted Sword, you guys. Uh, the Twisted Sword, we get to, we're, we're here at the heart of the Napoleonic Wars, uh, we get to Waterloo. Oh my god, I, seriously, the Twisted Sword, definitely one of the best books. Uh, after, after the Angry Tide, after the Angry Tide, I might seriously, the Twisted Sword is probably my second favorite book in the series. So I guess the big question, why why should you read this series? Uh, who would I recommend this series to? Um, obviously if you're a fan of the of the TV series, I definitely recommend jumping right on board these books. Um, they these the, the TV series is an incredible adaptation you guys. That was something I was very pleasantly surprised about when I first started reading the books, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe how perfect the TV series, what a perfect adaptation that was. It is a very, very, like, picture-perfect uh, adaptation. Uh, seriously, no exaggeration about that. So, yeah, if you definitely love the TV series, I definitely recommend jumping right on board. I think you're going to just, you're going to love these books just as much. Um, if you've not seen the TV series, uh, if you've never heard of it, um, I, I, I recommend this series in general if you're someone who loves historical fiction, especially historical fiction like a big family saga, if you will, you know, following the lives of a specific family, you know, more specifically here, the, the Podark family here in, in Cornwall, England. Um, yeah, if you love anything taking place in the late 1700s, um, going right into the 1800s with the Napoleonic Wars, um, I, I think there's a lot to really enjoy about this series. And the series, it, it's incredibly well, well written by Winston Graham. Like I said, considering that he wrote these books from 1945 to 2002, there's nothing inconsistent at all between the books. They are remarkably well put together, remarkably crafted. Uh, the characters are en enchanting and engaging and compelling and complex. You love them, you hate them. They, they are flawed human beings. Uh, that's, uh, that's a big specific thing I loved about these characters. They are very flawed. They have their moments where you're going to be upset with them. <laughs> they're they're going to they're going to make decisions that you're going to be frustrated with, and you're going to be concerned about their well-being. Um, even the location of Cornwall, because you are pretty much stuck in Cornwall. Every so often, you'll go to London or you'll go to France or something. Um, but you are pretty much stuck in Cornwall, and just the location of, the, of Cornwall is so beautiful, and, and Winston Graham writes it with just such description and beauty, and it's like, you can perfectly visualize it. Um, um, seriously, I can't praise this series enough. Yes, it's a very long series. It took me four months to get through these 12 books, you guys. And yeah, depending on your progress as a reader, you're either going to get through that quicker or slower, depending on your style of reading. Um, but never once did I get bored. I never got bored. Um, I never kind of got irritated like, oh my god, I'm, 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 I'm halfway through the series. I want to read something else. You know, I never felt that way. I never felt like, oh my god, I want to read something else, I'm getting bored. I, I enjoyed 
every moment of this series and I was excited book after book after book and you know you can't say that about every book series you know there's some book series you'll kind of reach a point and it's like okay I need a break but it's like you you, you got to tell yourself I got to get through it I got to get through it <laughs> um so yeah this series is just amazing from start to finish uh, I'm very sad I'm done with it but I feel very highly accomplished <laughs> uh, but yeah um it's an amazing series, you guys. I can't gush about it enough. There's so many great things about it. So many great things to enjoy. So, you guys, that is it for my review of the Poldark series by Winston Graham. Like I said, if you want some very specific, like, more spoilery details, I definitely go into all that good stuff on my Goodreads account. Um... Uh, I would definitely love to have a conversation with you guys if you if you, if you guys have read uh, the books I definitely would have some would love to have some conversations with you guys about just some of the big shocking moments that happen but yeah you guys have you guys read these books do you have plan on reading them have you at least seen the TV series just let me know all your thoughts down below so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you like this review you may like these other reviews bye guys